You're listening to the Hogbeat Hour with Andrew Hutchinson, Alex Trader, and Mason Choate on ESPN Arkansas on HitThatLine.com. Now, here's your host, Mason Choate. Welcome into the Hogbeat Hour. We got a really, really packed episode today. We got to break down the early signing day. Um, some players are coming back. We got to talk basketball. We've got some questions we're going to answer, but we got to start with the most important thing, and that is early signing day, Arkansas. I would say a successful day. Um, Hutch, in your eyes, I mean, you've been covering the Hogs for a while. Where where do you think this one ranks maybe since you've started covering Arkansas like professionally? You know, it was a pretty, I mean, uneventful day. I mean, yeah, there was a little bit of drama, which we'll talk about with a, a, commit, a player that ended up not committing to Arkansas. Uh, but really, other than that, you know, everyone that was supposed to sign, signed. Uh, you landed a commitment on you know signing day, which is always nice, but it was one that that I think everyone expected. We've talked about him quite a bit on the the show and on on the message board and everything. So really, it was just kind of a smooth sailing, and you know it it ranks pretty high right now. I think it's sitting at number twelve or number thirteen in the rivals rankings. It's kind of been going back and forth uh, as other teams land commitments, but uh, pretty pretty solid class overall and. Uh, you know, we're, we're not even really seeing the, the fruits of this eight and four, you know, top 25 season yet. I think we're, we're going to see that in the 2023 class. So uh, really good continuing to build kind of class for, for Sam Pittman and company. So they signed 19 players out of high school, two transfers and a punter from Australia. I want to ask you, uh, Alex Trader, our recruiting expert over at hogbeat.com. Um, of, of these guys, who are you most excited about? I know a lot of people have their own opinions. I think a lot of people are most excited about Jaden Hazelwood, the transfer from Oklahoma. But um, maybe is there somebody else that you're really excited about with this recruiting class? Yeah, I think as far as next year goes, it's hard not to think that Hazelwood's that guy that, that everyone's going to be looking forward to seeing because he does have those in-game reps. He does have that experience kind of being a team's – he wasn't necessarily the number one this year, but – he was a huge contributor within that offense and, and losing Traylon Burks. You're going to need to fill that somehow. Um, I think as far as the young guys go, Isaiah Satania really is just an interesting prospect. He's not, he's not huge. He, he's not necessarily um, going to go out there and dominate right away, but he does have crazy speed. He, he catches the ball really, really well. And I think there's room for him to step into a really, um, a really just important role for this Razorback offense. And then you've also got, uh, a pair of really good running backs coming in. And we've seen what, what this staff has done with their running backs over this past season. I, I think um, that paired with a, a strong group of O-linemen is going to make this a really, really interesting group to look out for. You mentioned Isaiah Satania, the wide receiver out of Fayetteville High School. He's one of four players in this recruiting class that aren't that isn't going to be an early enrollee. And so, Hutch, this is kind of your wheelhouse explaining these things that not everybody understands. But – um, all these Arkansas gets 18 of these players to be early enrollees. And our, I believe Sam Pittman talked on Wednesday about how that used to not ever be the case. You might get one or two early enrollees. So just kind of explain how it's transitioned into what it is now. Yeah. I mean, just a few short years ago, when I first started covering the team, it was a big deal when one or two guys were, were able to, to enroll early. And that was before the early signing period. Uh, I think the early signing period is, I don't know if it's really necessarily changed anything technically with the rule, but whenever you're able to sign early, kids are probably thinking, hey, why stick around for my you know, last semester of my senior year? I'm done playing football for the year. I mean, some guys, you know, like Isaiah Satini is one of those four guys that's not going to, you know, sign or enroll early. And uh, that's because he's going to go run track. Uh, Nico Davillier is another one. He's going to play basketball. Uh, but, you know, some of these guys – uh, they just want to go ahead and get on campus and, and be able to go through spring practice. It's huge. It's extremely beneficial. We saw it this past year. I mean, look at the running backs. You know, everyone thought that A.J. Green was going to be this superstar and got the guy that, that really steps up as far as, the run, as far as the running backs are concerned. But we ended up seeing Rocket Sanders instead. And that was because Rocket, you know, even though he was a, a converted wide receiver, you know, he came in and got to go through spring. Uh, we didn't get that, you know, A.J. Green didn't get that advantage. Uh, so he was kind of behind the eight ball. And I think that really kind of led to him not getting the quite the same amount of, you know, playing time as, as we saw from Rocket. And I think that's going to be something, it's not going to be 
as big of a deal this year because it seems like everybody's enrolling early. I mean, 18, that, that is a, definitely a school record. I don't know what the previous school record was, but I mean, I can remember maybe one year where they had like eight or nine and that was like, holy cow, that's a lot. Uh, and they're like going to double that. It, it's incredible. Uh, guys, are, I think, are more conscious about it. I think guys saw, you know, say when they were in you know middle school or junior high, they saw guys enrolling early, and they're like, hey, I want to do that. And if they think they're going to be a Division One prospect, they probably, you know, probably talk to their counselors at school and things like that and say, hey, what, what do I need to do in order to graduate from high school a semester early? And uh, they, they get it done, and, and they're more conscious about it. So I think that's probably contributed to it. And it's become a trend across all of college football. Uh, I don't know how many all the other schools are, have, but I'm going to look into that. Uh, because it is 18 seems just like an insane number. Another one of those early or guys that is not going to enroll early is Sam Bakke, a wide receiver out of Georgia. Um, Alex, you've kind of been on Sam for a while now. He waited to commit until Wednesday and then he signed with the Hogs. Just what do you expect out of him? And uh, I'm, I'm sure it's just a thing where he wanted to wait till signing day. His commitment really kind of fast tracked because we were hearing last month, hey, you know, he's he's or he may there may be some rumblings of, of oh he's he's in contact with the staff, but he's going to wait till after uh, the All American game to to make that announcement. And then all of a sudden he comes back from his visit last weekend, and it's oh we've got we've got an announcement coming on signing day. Uh, you have James Joyner po- posting the, the clip of the guy doing backflips. Um, really being the lead recruiting expert on him right there. And I, I think he's a really talented player and he's going to be able to come in and, and you know, I said Satania may not be that early impactor as, as the true freshman. Um, Bakke has, has, you know, he's a great route runner. He's able to get separation. He's not necessarily a burner, but he's able to get open. Uh, and when he is open, he's making really nice catches. So I think there's, there's some potential there for, for any of these receivers to step in and really kind of show, hey, I could be the guy if, if you guys are looking for someone to, to add into the rotation. You talked about James Joyner being a recruiter for Arkansas. There was another guy that he was hinting at that uh, apparently he had some some bad news on that one, but uh, LaTerrence Welch, a corner who committed to LSU, there was a lot of a lot of rumors going around, a lot of hype leading up to his commitment. Hutch, I know um, you were a little bit frustrated about what was going on, so just kind of explain that situation. I mean, you know, I wasn't necessarily frustrated about him specifically, just the whole recruiting game that that it is. I mean, it is a game. I mean, you have to play the game, and uh, just just really frustrating whenever you got information coming from both sides and it seemed like both Arkansas and LSU felt really good that they were going to get them I mean both both schools I mean a lot of the Arkansas commitments thought that they were that he was coming to Arkansas and and I think there was a moment there where it maybe was going to happen but uh, LSU you know does what LSU does in that you know it's an in-state kid he's from Lafayette so he's about an hour away from Baton Rouge and they they made a phone call and they they talked him into staying with LSU. I mean, he was committed to the Tigers, so it's not like you know he you know was out of the blue or anything. Uh, but they were able to to hold on to him. But Arkansas made a definite push. I mean, they were definitely in the mix. I don't think it was one of those things where Arkansas never had a chance and the kid was just trying to get you know more Twitter followers or something like that. I think he truly was torn on his decision. Of course. I say that, and then a few hours after his decision, he's out there tweeting and kind of trolling Arkansas fans, calling them weird and things like that. And uh, that, that's kind of not a, a good thing. It's that's going to make him one of the more uh, disliked players uh, on LSU. Uh, who knows? He may end up in the portal and come back to Arkansas, and Arkansas fans forgive him. But it was not a good look on his part to to be out there tweeting and kind of trolling Arkansas after the fact. Um, but yeah, it was. It was a little bit of drama. I mean, it's not a national signing day if you don't have a little bit of drama. So uh, other than that, though, everything was was smooth. But it was a little bit of a, a crazy, I don't know, 20, 30 to 30 minute period there where I was getting information from multiple people and it was all conflicting and I didn't know what the heck was going on. Well, it seems like Arkansas was able to address a few of their uh, their problems or their needs at hand. I believe I might be wrong. I believe they got four wide receivers and five offensive linemen. Um, Hutch, 
the wide receiver was something that, you know, you talk about Traylon Burks isn't going to be there, and you bring in a guy like Hazelwood who can hopefully make an immediate impact. And then offensive line, it seems like the offensive line should be fine next year, but moving forward, it's good to get those guys in there. And we know that Sam Pittman's always going to be bringing in big offensive linemen. Um, do you think that maybe there was another position that they should have targeted more? I believe Sam Pittman might have said that linebacker was a position that he wished they would have gotten a little bit more at. Yeah, I mean, they did sign, I believe, three linebackers. Uh, and, you know, at least one of those, Jordan Crook from, from Duncanville, Texas, I think could be a, a potential early uh, contributor, which we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but, yeah, I think he, he pointed out that he likes what they have already on campus. I mean, he likes Andrew Parker. Uh, he'll be a fifth-year senior next year. Uh, he likes uh, Pooh Paul, Chris Paul, the, the true freshman who played just a little bit, but he did redshirt this year. Uh, and you're, you're obviously hoping to get bumper pull back, uh, but you are still losing Grant Morgan. You're losing Hayden Henry. That is a lot of snaps that they've got to replace at linebacker. So they, they do think that they might possibly pursue some other linebackers. You know, I know that they you know, had reached out to I think it, Kobe McKenzie was his name, the Oklahoma commit who decommitted from Oklahoma, committed to Texas and flipped back to Oklahoma. Uh, but I know Arkansas had reached out to him. Uh, so they were, you know, obviously still recruiting some linebackers. Uh, they could maybe find a linebacker from the portal, uh, depending on who pops up. But, you know, Sam Pittman said it, you know, they're not just going to take a guy because, you know, say he went, he was a former five-star recruit who went to some school, didn't play for three or four years, and then they're going to bring him in. They're, they're going to try to find somebody who was productive at whatever school he was at. So, uh, if one of those guys doesn't pop up, maybe they hold off and they don't get anybody. Uh, but if someone really good pops up, they're going to go after them. And, and I could see them bringing in somebody, if nothing else, you know, for some depth at that position. So you talked about them bringing in new guys or maybe bringing in more, more guys. But explain the scholarship situation to us, Hutch, because a lot of people don't understand that. Um, personally, it gets confusing to me, especially with maybe more people transferring out. Does that open up more spots? Just kind of explain that. Shoot. I mean, it's still halfway confusing for me, but I think I've got a good handle on it. So every year teams in the FBS can sign 25 players. Those are, those are called initial counters. Uh, that means you could sign high school kids, Juco transfers, or traditional transfers out of the portal. Uh, but all those guys count towards your 25. This year, however, the NCAA, because of the portal and so many kids in there, uh, they decided they were going to allow schools to have an extra seven scholarships. Uh, that only You only get those if you have seven players transfer out, uh, which I think most schools are going to hit that. Uh, so that would give you 32. However, Arkansas in the previous class in 2021 went over their allowed limit. Uh, they brought in the three defensive line transfers and Warren Thompson, they put him on scholarship uh, after they'd already hit their limit. So those guys have to count toward this class. So that takes away four year spots. So 32 minus four, that puts you at 28. Assuming you have seven players transfer out, Arkansas has already had six players transfer out. We'll go into that uh, more in another segment. I know, uh, but six players transfer out, assuming you have one more, which, it's not, you know, super you know, bold to say that they're going to have at least one more, if not several more, transfer out. So that would give you 28 spots. They signed 22. That doesn't include Miles Rouser, who was uh, committed and plans to wait until February. Assuming he sticks with Arkansas, that puts you at 23. So then you have five more spots that you can use on either transfers out of the portal. Uh, you could find more high school kids. You know, I know there's still – you know, trying to go after Gentry Williams, the Oklahoma commit, who kind of like Rouser decided he was going to wait until February to sign. Uh, so you've got five spots that they can fill. Uh, they don't have to fill them, uh, but I would be shocked if they don't use all five of those spots uh, on either transfers or, you know, maybe another high school kid pops up here or there. All right. Well, you, you kind of mentioned those guys right there. And Hutch, I just want to ask you, I know Rouser might be on the fence, um, Gentry Williams, we don't know. Are you expecting, like, is there anybody that you're confident in Arkansas getting moving forward? Well, Rouser has told rivals that he, he still plans to sign with Arkansas in February. However, 
delaying it from December to February always makes me a little uneasy. Like, okay, well, why, why wait? You know, unless there's a legitimate reason. Um, sometimes there's family reasons like, hey, my mom's in the hospital right now. I really don't want to deal with having to sign, but I'll definitely sign in February. No worries. Uh, as far as I know, there's nothing like that going on. You know, with Gentry Williams, it kind of makes sense because they, Oklahoma just hired a new coaching staff and he hadn't really had a chance to meet with the defensive coordinator. Uh, I still anticipate him signing with the Sooners, uh, but Arkansas, I would say, has a better chance today than it did Tuesday before we found out he was going to delay his, his signing. So, um, you know, I, I think that I think Rouser will eventually stick with Arkansas unless something else pops up. I mean, another school could come calling like, oh, crap, you know, our top three or four options at safety fell through. Let's go try to find Miles Rouser. Uh, and get him to flip to our school. Uh, you see that happen all the time, uh, but I, I I don't know how that's all going to play out. But as of right now, I'm going to treat him as an Arkansas commitment. Uh, but I would say nothing is you know for certain at this point. Well, everything that we're talking about on this podcast, you can get all of that and more over at hogbeat.com. You definitely want to go subscribe because everything that Andrew Hutchinson is talking about and Alex Trader, they do that and more at hogbeat.com. You'll get it insider coverage you'll get everything you need game coverage recruiting all of that go get us a subscription at hogbeat.com and also we're presented by cj's butcher boy burgers the best burgers in the world i've said it before i'll say it again best burgers in the world go try them locations in fayetteville and russellville and we'll talk more about recruiting we'll talk about some basketball and we'll answer some subscriber questions here on the hogbeat hour You're listening to the Hogbeat Hour with Andrew Hutchinson, Alex Trader, and Mason Choate on ESPN Arkansas on HitThatLine.com. Now, here's your host, Mason Choate. All right, welcome back here on the Hogbeat Hour, brought to you by CJ's Butcher Boy Burgers. Guys, they're officially announced the world's best burger by me, by Hutch, and by Alex. The world's best burger and world's best fries also. You can still go vote them. For best of Northwest Arkansas, vote them. I think December 22nd is the last time you can vote. So vote them for the best because they are the best. Uh, locations in Fayetteville on Weddington and Russellville. I think it's on like Arkansas Avenue, maybe something like that. Um, but go check them out. You definitely want to try it. It will be the best burger you ever have in your life. Um, so news of the week this segment, a, a lot of news to get to. So let's start with you, Alex. So Jalen Catalan and Ricky Stromberg both coming back. We know that's, I mean, that's just huge. Sam Pittman said both of those guys were NFL guys, could have gotten drafted. So um, just your initial reaction on those two coming back. Well, I was really surprised to see Catalan coming back. Uh, going through this whole process, I know it, it might have been a little bit crazy, but I was thinking, you know, Traylon Burks has a better chance of coming back than Catalan just because, you know, he does have that, that, that mentality that Hutch talked about last week where – we were really surprised that he's opting out of this bowl game just because of how much he does love this team and how much he does love kind of being out there for the state. And, and you know, it looks like Catalan uh, ha- has one more year in him. He's ready to go out there. I think some of it certainly does have to do with the injury and him falling from being projected in the first round down to maybe the, the second, third, fourth round. Um, but nonetheless, I, I think he's got a, an opportunity to play himself into – a a top draft position next year. And if if you have that opportunity and you're able to already make money with the NIL deals, um, especially as a top caliber player, not only in the SEC, but within the country, I I think there's no reason not to take it, um, especially when you're you're trying to set yourself up for generational wealth. And then Ricky Stromberg, it seems like his situation was more of like the Sam Pittman effect, kind of like a Grant Morgan type thing. He wants to come back and play for Pittman. We know that Pittman's working on bumper pull also on that. But, Hutch, um, how big is it to have a coach that players just want to come back and play for? Yeah, I mean, especially with Ricky Stromberg, considering he's an offensive lineman. I mean, he's he's a guy who who probably, you know, Sam Pittman said he fully believed he could make a roster. But uh, with him coming back, another year of Sam Pittman, another year of Cody Kennedy – uh, he thought that he could really move up the draft boards and, and get some of that generational wealth, kind of like what Alex was talking about. Um, I, I, I feel like, yes, Sam Pittman has an impact on that, you know, not just because he was, you know, offensive line guru, but 
you know, players love playing for him. And uh, Ricky Stromberg, it didn't seem like, well, we got to talk to him uh, later the, in the day after he made his decision. He didn't seem like he had any reservations at all. He was like, oh, yeah, it was really easy. I mean, I talked to Sam Pittman. He told me what my grade was as far as the NFL draft, and it wasn't what I wanted. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm going to come back and play for Sam Pittman and Cody Kinney. It's a no-brainer. So uh, I thought that was a fantastic news for Arkansas. And, of course, Jalen Catalan is, is huge. You know, He's probably not going to come back if he doesn't like his head coach, if he doesn't like his defensive coordinator, Barry Odom. Uh, so that, that is uh, big-time news for Arkansas. And as you said, we'll see how much that impacts the, the, the seniors trying to decide if they want to come back as super seniors, like a bumper pool, like a Monteric Brown, like a John Ridgeway, guys like that. Uh, going to be interesting to see how all that, that roster stuff shakes out over the next few weeks. Well, Arkansas got a commitment from Landon Jackson, a defensive end transfer from LSU. Um, Alex, just thoughts on that. What do you think of Landon? What have you seen from him um, on the film? I haven't got a chance to take a full look at his film yet, but anytime you're landing, you know, those, those high four-star guys, it, it's a big pickup one year out of high school. Like Hutch said earlier, it, the stars aren't all that matters. You're going to have guys who are diamonds in the rough and you're going to have uh, guys who don't ever quite live up to that ranking, but uh, Jackson going through a little bit of an injury this season kind of hampered his playing time, kept him off the field, maybe a little more than you would have um, seen had he not gotten injured. And, and I think, you know, being able to pair him with a guy like Trey Williams and have him come in and be successful, it's going to it's going to make this team better. And I think as the scheming goes on, you're going to be able to see, hey, some things that worked at the beginning of the season that weren't working maybe through the middle of the season, that's going to get fine tuned. And if you can put together a, even a pretty decent defense with the offense that we saw at points last season, then, then I think that's going to be uh, even tougher for, for opposing teams to deal with. Hutch, have you heard anything about Jackson, um, about, uh, you know, how he might impact Arkansas? Just what do, what do you think about him coming to the Hogs? Yeah, Sam Pittman mentions, you know, he was one of the 22 guys that signed uh, on signing day, and Sam Pittman was able to talk about him. And he thinks he's a guy that could come in and help them immediately. And, you know, he's that's a position they, they need help at. I mean, you're losing Trey Williams. You need a pass rusher uh, desperately. Uh, so, I, I think that, that he could help Arkansas, assuming he is fully healthy. Uh, the injury that Alex mentioned there, he actually got hurt his senior year of high school. Uh, it was a pretty severe injury, if I remember correctly. Uh, I can't remember the exact details, but it was a, one of those scary ones that you're just really worried about. And uh, He did play in the first five games of LSU season, all on special teams, uh, which I thought was a little bit interesting. Uh, so he burned his red shirt, uh, and – he, uh, you know, he, he probably would have played more than just the five games, but it's my understanding that he got kind of – he just wasn't healthy enough to keep playing. So uh, you hope that a full year later he'll be healthy. Uh, he's going to be here for, for spring ball, so hopefully he can go through that and kind of get – you know, learn the system and all that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's still a young guy, and uh, he could be one of those that, that comes in and, and really – provides that that pass rush Arkansas really needs to replace Trey Williams. So Jackson comes into Arkansas as a transfer, but three players announced on signing early signing day that they are going to transfer out from Arkansas. These are three guys that didn't really make an impact this season, but Hutch, um, you know, that's three, three scholarships that are open, correct? I, I might be wrong. No, you're right. I mean, they, they had three players that had already transferred out, and then you add – uh, the three that transferred on early signing day, uh, Andy Boykin, JT Towers, Jermaine Hamilton, Jordan, uh, those that puts Arkansas at six. So they need one more transfer to get all full, you know, the full seven extra scholarships. Uh, but yeah, none of those guys ever saw the field for Arkansas. You know, Boykin and Towers, they were red shirt freshmen. Uh, I think Towers had maybe battled some injuries. Boykin just never really cracked the depth chart, uh, didn't really make the travel roster. Uh, Jermaine Hamilton Jordan he was probably the more, most surprising of the three just because he was a true freshman and he was so active on the recruiting trail uh, he was kind of the guy kind of like James Jointer in this class he was the one always tweeting at recruits and you know trying to get them to come join him in Arkansas uh, so to see him leave you know he was he battled an injury throughout the season uh, don't believe he ever got to, to travel uh, he may have dressed out for a game or two I can't remember exactly 
uh, but he, an injury kind of just kind of hampered his season. And I guess he just decided, you know, I'm, I'm not going to play here. So I'm going to go try to play somewhere else. And, and that's going to happen from time to time. So uh, yeah, three, three transfers gives them six. They need one more. And I would fully expect that to happen uh, probably at some point before the bowl game. And there's probably going to be more, uh, more than that, you know, especially, you know, include after spring ball, uh, there's usually a, a, an exodus at that point as well. Well, throw out some names then. Tell us some guys that you think <laughs> might transfer, Hutch. You know, it, it, I hate to speculate. You know, I know the, the one name that's circulating message boards and social media right now is Malik Hornsby. You know, he's the backup quarterback. K.J. Jefferson had such an incredible season. Uh, so you're probably not going to be the starter next year. Maybe even the year after that, you know, if KJ doesn't, you know, if he leaves early for the draft or not. Um, but that the quarterbacks, they like to transfer. And then to add, you know, to kind of to stoke those flames a little bit, Malik Hornsby was not at practice on Wednesday. Uh, we'll see if he's there on Thursday. By the time you're listening to this, we'll know that. Just be sure to check the, the Hogbeat message board. We'll have that on there uh, after practice. Uh, but he wasn't there. Allegedly, it's because he had a test to go to. Uh, don't know if that's 100% accurate because there are quite a bit of rumors now. And usually where there's smoke, there's fire. So that could be a guy. You know, we didn't see uh, Darren Turner at practice on Wednesday. Uh, trying to think who else. You know, uh, we didn't see Landon Rogers, but I, I'm not sure about him. He may have actually been a test. But, you know, Darren Turner is a name that I've heard could be a transfer. I mean, he's a guy that he really hasn't even cracked the, the three deep at wide receiver. Uh, there's been some walk-ons that have been ahead of him on the depth chart. So he could be a guy to watch. Uh, so yeah, there, there's, there's several guys that I could see. And usually, I mean, Sam Pittman's talked about this guys will transfer because they want to go somewhere they can play. And, and he gets that. So uh, I would look at the guys that have been here for multiple years and you've never heard of them you know, making, making a travel roster or anything like that. Th those would be the guys I would look at and say, hey, he might transfer. All right. Well, speaking of transfers, one more guy before we end this segment. Um, Drayden Norwood, uh, former Fort Smith Northside cornerback, I believe. He was the number one player in the state in last year's class, if I'm not wrong. He has entered the transfer portal. He was at A&M. Do you think there's any chance that Arkansas gets him much? Yeah, I mean, I, I think at one point he was the number one player in the state. I think he ended up on Rivals, the third or something like that. Maybe some other services had him different. But, yeah, he was one of the top prospects coming out of the state in last year's class. Went to A&M uh, and has now entered the portal. I have heard that, you know, if, if Arkansas were to pursue him, that Norwood would be interested uh, but, you know, and, and I'm not sure how interested Arkansas would be, you know, maybe with LaTerrence Welch, you know, signing with LSU, you know, it, depending on how they feel about Gentry Williams, he's another defensive back, you know, maybe they decide, hey, we need another corner and, and they bring him in. And I think uh, anytime you have a chance to bring an in-state kid back home, uh, it would be solid. You know, we saw it with Markel Etsy this past year and he started basically every game he was healthy. So, uh I could see him being another guy they target with one of those last few spots they have in the, the 2022 class. All right. Well, coming up next on the hog beat hour, we're going to talk about these recruits that um, sign on early signing day. The guys we're most excited about some potential early contributors. And then we're going to answer some questions that subscribers sent in to us. And then we're going to talk basketball later on. Don't forget. We're brought to you by CJ's butcher boy burgers. And don't forget to subscribe to hogbeat.com. You're listening to the Hogbeat Hour with Andrew Hutchinson, Alex Trader, and Mason Choate on ESPN Arkansas on HitThatLine.com. Now, here's your host, Mason Choate. Back here on the Hogbeat Hour, brought to you by CJ's Butcher Boy Burgers. As I've said before, and I will continue to say, best burger in the world. Um, this segment, we're going to talk about some of these recruits who we're most excited about some guys who might be early contributors, and then we'll answer some questions. Um, let's start with you, Andrew Hutchinson. Who is a guy that you're most excited about in this class? Let's not, let's not add in the transfers because I think we already talked about that with Alex. So of the freshmen. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to be excited by a guy like an Isaiah Satinia. Um, the guy's just electric. 
Uh, he's got speed, like elite speed. I mean, we're talking, he plans to run track at Arkansas as well. So uh, the dude can fly. Uh, so you, you've got that speed. He also, as Sam Pittman said in the, in the press conference on Wednesday, that you know, even though he's not the biggest guy in the world, he can go up and win one-on-one balls. Uh, I mean, he's not a Traylon Burks by any means, but I think he's, he's going to be a guy that can help. I, I had a chance to talk to Casey Dick, the former Arkansas quarterback and now Fayetteville High football coach, about him. And uh, he said that he has elite ball skills, and obviously to go with that speed, uh, he thinks he could contribute – early on and so uh, I think with with the Arkansas looking for receivers you know obviously they still have Warren Thompson they have Keytron Jackson they have the guys that that they brought in last year that Sam Pittman said they still like Uh, but I think that Isaiah Satini has the talent to be a guy that could come in and contribute right away I mean heck he he led the he led the country in receiving yards this year I mean that, that tells you right there I mean he had like 1900 yards or something like that it was incredible he had an incredible senior season and I think he uh, could be a guy that Arkansas counts on early on you know as well as you know the Jaden Hazelwood as you said you know transfers and things like that so he's one I, I'm really excited to see how he adjusts to, to the college game all right that'll lead us into our first subscriber question I'll ask this one to you Alex Trader. Um, this one's from NASA Hog. How would you order Satania, McAdoo, and Bakke in terms of being ready to contribute early? Um, I think I think with Satania and, and Bakke not coming, it, it makes it tougher – or not coming early, it makes it a little bit tougher for them to, to be ready right away. So, you know, you might give the edge to McAdoo there uh, just because he's going to have the, the benefit of going through that spring ball period – and being able to get those extra reps and learn the offense. Um, all things equal, I think you may go Satania just because he is so interesting, like Hutch was talking about, elite ball skills, able to go to go get it. Um, and if he doesn't have to go get it, which is most of the time because he's wide open, um, you know he's going to be able to do some stuff with it after the catch. Um, Bakke, I mentioned, really interesting, uh, able to go get separation, even though he's not necessarily a burner. Um, this is a really, really good group of receivers. Uh, I think you have to factor in the, the early enrollee aspect. So I'd, I'd probably go McAdoo, Satania, Bakke, just, just based on, on that uh, for a lot of it. All right. So let's switch over to the defensive side of the ball. This is a question from Dauntaun. I think that's how you say it. Um, Hutch, who do you see as quick contributors on defense? Yeah, the one guy that I've kind of had my eye on all along is, is Jordan Crook, uh, the linebacker from Duncanville. I mentioned him earlier in the show. Uh, I, I had a chance to go watch him play in person uh, when I traveled to Arkansas's game against Texas A&M and, and Jerry's World. Uh, so I, I've had a chance to, to see him in action. He played – I mean, for, for one thing, his on-the-field play is, is phenomenal, obviously. I mean, he's a 5.7 three-star, so he's a high three-star – I know people freak out like, oh, well, he's a three-star. He's not very good. Well, a 5.7 is almost a four-star. Plus, he's one of the higher-ranked you know, linebackers in the country. Uh, I think inside linebackers, how we have him classified on rivals. Uh, but he's got, obviously, skills in that regard. He plays at a powerhouse program in Texas. So that tells me, okay, so he's not just racking up you know, stats at a small school. Plus, when I had a chance to interact with him after the game, when I interviewed him, he just really struck me as mature and, and just really smart. And I just got a really good impression from him based on my conversation after that game. And uh, to not only, you don't only have to be really talented uh, to come in and play immediately, but you also have to be mature and, and be able to handle it as a true freshman. And I think he could handle it. So, and plus throw in the fact that <laughs> you're replacing Grant Morgan and Hayden Henry uh, don't know what Bummer Pool's doing yet. Uh, as of this recording, that could change, obviously. Uh, but there's going to be opportunity for him to play. And so uh, he's a guy I could see uh, being an early contributor on the defensive side for sure. I'm going to go back to the first question that I asked Hutch, and I want to ask you, Alex, now. Um, of the freshmen that signed on early signing day, who are you most excited about? You cannot say Satania. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna stay away from him for the sake of parody anyway, but um I think 
this O-line group's really interesting. Andrew Chambly has really good feet when he when he's you know able to get into that that pass set. Um, you also have a guy like Amarian Harris who, who really dominated every, every time I was able to see him, he was really in control of what was going on. Um, I think just a step away from the O-line though, Tyrus Washington at tight end is a, is a beast. He's, he's nicknamed Megatron for a good reason. Uh, he's able to go out there. He, he manhandles people, likes the physical aspect of blocking, which you don't always see with tight ends sometimes you'll have guys who are more finesse and with you know i'm expecting trey knox to take a little bit of a step up at that tight end position next year just having another year of it under his belt with uncertainty around that i wouldn't say it's the craziest thing in the world to see him maybe find his way into a couple of reps and be able to to show uh the arkansas fan base and the coaching staff what he's able to do early all right um hutch Let's go back to you for a question. We're going to go back to a question from NASA Hogg. Um, what, in your opinion, does Arkansas need to improve on from a coaching, recruiting, or development standpoint to take the next developmental step as a program? I really think it all starts with recruiting. Uh, I really do. I mean, that we've seen them steadily get better uh, recruiting. You know, Sam Pittman, you know, a lot of coaches will – say, oh, I don't look at recruiting rankings because they're you know meaningless, whatever. But Sam Pittman's pretty open. He says, you know, I, I look at those things. I want to be ranked higher. Uh, it's kind of a refreshing uh, stance. You know, I think Eric Musselman and uh, Mike Neighbors have said similar things. Like, you know, we look at that kind of stuff. And generally, if, if we're ranking really high, you know, look at the look at who wins national championships. It's the schools that consistently rank in the top 10 in recruiting classes. Uh, so, uh, Sam Pittman has looked at that and, and we've seen it gradually get better. I mean, just look at, you know, let's look at one position just for anecdotal evidence. You know, Alex mentioned the offensive line. Arkansas signed four offensive linemen and three of them were ranked a 5.7 three star or better, a 5.7. Uh, so that is significant because in the four, I think four classes in between when Sam Pittman left as an offensive line coach to go to Georgia, and when he came back, between that period, Arkansas signed, I want to landed 15 offensive linemen, I want to say. None of them were 5.7 or better. None of them. And so far, Arkansas has landed in, his, in Sam Pittman's first class, he landed one of them. It was a four-star. In his second class, he landed a couple of them. And now in his third class, he's landed three of them. So we're just seeing steady, steady improvement each year. And I think you could do that at, you know, most positions. And I mean, look at it, Arkansas's recruiting ranking. We don't know what it's going to end up yet uh, because other kids still need to commit and everything, but to be 12th or 13th uh, on December 16th, the day, you know, second day of the early signing period, that is incredible for Arkansas. Uh, it looks like they might possibly be able to finish top 20. They were 25th last year and they were like 40 something in uh, his first year. So to, to see that steady improvement, I think that's what, what, what you're going to need. You're going to need to add more players, more good players uh, to be able to take that next step to be, you know, maybe not just a middle of the pack SEC team, but to be in the upper tier. All right. I'm going to go back to you, Alex. Uh, sleeper, maybe a guy in this freshman class that people aren't really talking about as much um, that you think might be able to have more of an impact than people think. Yeah, I, I think um, I, it's hard to be a sleeper when you're a four-star prospect, but I think we haven't said his name yet. Rashad Dubin or Dubinion Dubinion um, is a really, really great running back. You see on Twitter every week his highlights that he puts up, and he's hurdling kids. He's running kids over. It's really, really refreshing to see someone like craving contact the way that he does um, in in those highlights. And you're even with the stacked backfield that Arkansas already has. Uh, at the running back position. I think, you know, we saw a freshman break into that rotation this year and have a huge impact. And I think um, with, with those guys ahead of him, it, we may not see it on the likes of, of Rocket Sanders or Dom Johnson, but you could see him break in and potentially, you know, um, I'm, I'm not sure what Traylon Smith's plan is going forward just yet, but uh, you could see him potentially, you know, if, if a spot opens up in that forehead monster, take the, the role of that fourth, fourth head. 
All right, last question for you, Hutch. Going back to Don Han, um, any signees that might change position? Oh, that's a good, good question. You know, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. You know, I know uh, in the in the secondary they signed a couple of guys, uh, Anthony. Uh, oh crap, what's his name? Uh, Anthony Brown and Jalen Lewis. I, I always want to try to mix up their names. Um, they're really good friends from Tennessee. I think one of them, I want to say Jalen Lewis, is being recruited to play safety, like the same position as uh, Jalen Catalan. Uh, but with Jalen Catalan coming back, uh, maybe that changes things. And maybe you could see one of those guys, you know, kind of like what Jaden Johnson did this year, move down to the nickel spot. Or you know, maybe if they, if they don't land any more corners, maybe one of those guys shifts out to corner. So I could definitely see some movement in that regard. Um, trying to think of who else, you know, maybe, you know, uh, Patrick Kutas, uh, the offensive lineman from Memphis. You know, Sam Pittman talked about him being a guy that could potentially come in and contribute early as an offensive lineman uh, but when they first recruited him I think they were looking at him as a defensive lineman so he's a guy that uh, could potentially uh, some I mean I, I think they're going to definitely give him a look at offensive line first but if it doesn't work out there for whatever reason you know he could be a guy they move over to the defensive side of the ball eventually and, and give him a look over there so there's definitely some guys that are, are really good athletes that could shine wherever uh, you put them uh, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, which which of those guys, you know, if it happens earlier in their careers, or maybe if they if they move after a, a year or so and it's not working out at whatever position they start out at. All right. Well, coming up next, we're going to talk about basketball. The Hogs fell to Oklahoma in Tulsa. It was not pretty. So we'll talk about that. Maybe some issues they have going on. Um, maybe they'll get better. They did take a big fall in the AP poll. Um, so we'll get to that here on the Hog Beat Hour. <music> You're listening to the Hogbeat Hour with Andrew Hutchinson, Alex Trader, and Mason Choate on ESPN Arkansas on HitThatLine.com. Now, here's your host, Mason Choate. Last segment here on the Hogbeat Hour. We're going to talk basketball. We talked enough football. Um, Arkansas loses to Oklahoma on Saturday in Tulsa. It was a weird game because Oklahoma dominated the entire game for the most part, but every once in a while, Arkansas got back in it, but it just like, I don't know. I I think part of us expected it and part of us did not expect it. So Hutch, just your, your general reaction. It felt like Arkansas just, they just struggled a lot in this game. Yeah. They really never gave themselves a chance from the start. I mean, they fell down 13, nothing at the very beginning of the game. It took them almost five minutes to score. Uh, so, yeah, it was not a really good showing by Arkansas at all. Um, they also uh, – they did manage to make it a game, like, at the end of the first half. And so you're thinking, oh, okay, you know, maybe they'll be able to come out and, you know, assert their dominance in the second half because you think, you know, on paper, Arkansas is the better team. Uh, but they came out, they scored the first bucket of the second half to make it a four-point game and then probably gave up 11 straight points to <laughs> – to Oklahoma to, to push it back out again. And they did manage to cut it down to three at one point, uh, then had a, you know, just a, a mistake after a, a, a rebound that would have given them the ball with a chance to tie it up. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, just a really not good showing by the basketball team. And, and a lot of the issues that we were worried about that we've talked about on this show that we've had discussed on the message board and everything, a lot of them just all – you know, came to fruition and, and all came to a head against a team that was not UCA, not Little Rock, and uh, Oklahoma made them pay. Yeah, one of those issues that we've talked about and I know have been talked about a lot on the message boards is the three-point shooting. Um, but this game, it was not just the three-point shooting. They were 7 of 24 from three in this game, but they also shot just 34.4% from the field. So Alex – um Devo Davis your leading scorer 26 points but it took 21 shots nobody else really made a whole lot of an impact on the offensive side of the ball no and it was really like um, Hutch said it it wasn't pretty I think that's an understatement it was really a a tough game um you you get outshot by 20 20 percent from the field by 30 percent from three you're just not going to win games like that and the one thing where it really was promising is 
this is a team that struggled with free throws a little bit and, and they shot 17 of 18 from the line. So that's something that you're going to want to take and definitely keep that momentum going forward. But there's just not been, there's not been a game this year where you really look at it and wire to wire, you think, Oh, this is a team that's going to be able to compete really, really deep in just because you're not seeing those hot shooting stretches that you do with, with teams that are able to kind of pick up and, and get going in March and make those big runs in the tournament. A trend throughout this year has kind of been the three-point defense for Arkansas, and it seems like every team that comes into Bud Wald Arena just shoots the lights out. Um, so, Hutch, was this game more of Oklahoma just shoots the ball really well, or was it finally just like, okay, well, it's no longer a coincidence. Maybe Arkansas's three-point defense just needs some work. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a little bit of both. I mean, obviously, Oklahoma, they didn't come into that game with a great – three-point shooting percent. I think it was like 32%, something like that. So, I mean, it was better in Arkansas, but not great by any means. And uh, But also, they had a lot of open looks. I mean, I, I don't know how many of them were open, but a lot of them were open. Uh, shots that you would expect a high-level Division One player to make. And, and by golly, they made a lot of them. I mean, they were – at one point, I mean, well into the game, they were shooting like 66% from three-point range. I mean, that's incredible. Uh, and so uh, the defense has to be better. Uh, they've got to get it figured out. Eric Musman, he's you, he's proven that he can do that. I mean, the first year he was here, they led the country in three-point defense, and now they're just atrocious. And so uh, they've got to get it figured out, especially before they play teams that shoot it even better than Oklahoma, because Oklahoma is not a good shooting team by any means. So, J.D. Note, um, Arkansas's leading scorer on the season, he's had some games where he struggled, and this game against Oklahoma was one of those. And after afterwards, Eric Musselman kind of said, um, you know, he's trying to shoot his way out of the slump, and that's not really working for him. And he said that they talked about it. That's something that they're, they're going to work on. And then he also said that they might have to go to some lineup changes and different rotations, and if J.D. doesn't, you know, get out of this slump, then he just might not play as much as he has been. So Hutch just that's a that's a big thing because JD Note is probably your most talented scorer on the team. Yeah, I mean the, the biggest thing with JD is that he just continues, as you said, to try to shoot himself out of the slump. I mean, he's over the last eight games shooting just over 20% from three point range. And he's done it on almost seven attempts per game. And that's just, that's just not good. And he was two of seven uh, against uh, Oklahoma. I think one of those came late in the game, like in the final couple of minutes when it was already like a, a 20 point margin and it was over and they were just chunking up shots. Um, so yeah, I, JD has to reel that in a little bit. He's much better when he's attacking the basket, you know, cutting to the basket, driving, things like that. Although, uh, he really struggled with that against Oklahoma. I think he's one of seven inside the arc. So not a good showing by him anywhere. Uh, but you'd like to see him do that, be more aggressive, uh, maybe try to distribute a little bit more and not throw up so many three-pointers, especially whenever he's shooting. There was one in the game where, you know, at, at the BOK Center, uh, they, had, uh, uh, they had like multiple three-point lines. They had the NBA three-point line out there. Uh, which Arkansas might have thought that was a three-point line they were supposed to be shooting from. It was a little bit confusing, uh, it looked like. But J.D. threw up one that was like several feet beyond the NBA line, and he didn't make it. So it just kind of shows you he's got to be better with his shot selection. And if he isn't, his minutes are going to go down. So if his minutes are to go down, um, who's going to fill that role? We saw Devo Davis, his, his three-point shot looked a little bit better against Oklahoma. This is the first time we've seen him make that many three-pointers in a game. Um, I, I guess you can both answer this. Hutch, I'll go with you first. Who's somebody who can maybe fill that role of J.D. Um, until he figures it out? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to see some other guys, you know, get some more minutes, you know, like a Jackson Robinson, maybe KK, um, not sure. But I feel like Jackson's going to get some more run. And he's a guy that if he can if he can get going, he could really light it up and fill it up from three. And uh, we haven't seen it yet. He's got a really bad three-point shooting percentage so far with Arkansas. But we know that he's capable of it. I mean, that's what he's known for is being a shooter. 
so I could see him maybe stepping up. You know, Devo seems to be filling in more of a scoring role. Uh, he did take 21 shots, you mentioned, uh, against Oklahoma, which is probably too many. Uh, but he was, I think, four of seven, four of eight from three-point range. Uh, that's pretty good for Devo. I think he had only made four three-pointers all year coming into that game. And I think he made three all of last year or something like that as a freshman. So uh, that's, a, that's a nice development for, for Devo. Uh, but I would like to see him not, you know, if he's going to score 26 points, uh, let's not do it on, I think, 9 of 21 shooting, not super efficient. Uh, but, hey, if, if no one else is going to score – uh, he's he had to step up and do it himself. So maybe try to see if he he could kind of maintain that scoring stretch that he's been on, averaging I think the last last four games he's scored like 16, 16, 18, and 26. So averaging close to 20 points a game. Uh, don't know if that's sustainable, but that'd be be a heck of a development if he could do it and and still be efficient and also distribute the balls as a point guard. Alex, is there anybody you have in mind that? Uh you think maybe could step up for the Hogs and um, start to help them out offensively? I, I think Hutch hit the nail on the head with Jackson Robinson. He he comes in and, and you know, he – I believe it was maybe two weeks ago against UCA was able to get, to get a couple going. Didn't necessarily finish it out as strong as you would have liked. Um, did miss a couple after that. But you saw, you know, he hit those couple threes and the crowd got going. Um, able to, to give effort on the defensive side of the ball, I think – that's really the important thing is if you're not going to be able to, it's going to be hard to match the scoring of J- JD Note. That's we've seen that he, that's kind of what he does. He's able to go out there and get buckets. So when that's not falling for him, you need someone who's able to kind of pick up the slack on the other end. And uh, I think if you can't match that, then, then finding someone who's willing to put in the effort and also able to, Hey, if you're open or if we need someone to get a spark or to be a spark plug and get us going, then you're able to do that. And I, I think, you know, Robinson's one of the guys you have to talk, uh, you have to look at for that. So Arkansas fell to number 24 in the AP poll. Um, big drop, but it was to be expected. Uh, not a whole lot of time until SEC season starts. So Hutch, in your expert opinion, what does Arkansas need to work on the most before SEC play starts? I think Eric Musselman just needs to figure out his lineup. He needs to figure out his rotations. He needs to figure out the defined roles of every player. I mean, we just, I just don't feel like this team is comfortable and knows who it is yet. I don't think Eric Musselman knows who it is yet, uh, which is kind of concerning because, as you said, only two non conference games left. So they've got to get that figured out against Hofstra. They got to get it figured out against Elon. Hofstra is actually a pretty good team. You know, they, pushed uh houston to the brink i think they played well against someone else like maybe maryland or something like that so you got to watch out for them at simmons bank arena this weekend uh but elon then you even open up conference play against some you know the weaker teams i think he played texas a&m early mississippi state uh so you, you got to get that figured out before you get to the likes of an alabama or auburn or you know kentucky teams like that you've got to get the roles defined and figured out ahead of time so Arkansas will play Hofstra this Saturday at 7 o'clock in North Little Rock Simmons Bank Arena. Um, yeah, so that's all we got for you here on the Hogbeat Hour, brought to you by CJ's Butcher Boy Burgers. Don't forget to go vote them. Best burger, best fries in Northwest Arkansas. Don't forget to subscribe to the to hogbeat.com. Um, best information on everything Arkansas athletics. Andrew Hutchinson, the best in the business. I mean, he was Arkansas Sports Writer of the Year last year. Um, should be Arkansas Sports Writer of the Year for every single year until he quits doing it. And I don't know if he ever will quit doing it. So um, thank you guys for listening. I've been Mason Choate. They've been Hutch and Alex Trader. Have a good day. You're listening to the Hogbeat Hour with Andrew Hutchinson, Alex Trader, and Mason Choate on ESPN Arkansas on hitthatline.com.